Hey folks, Bob Main here from Handgun World Podcast. Uh, I got a special guest with me right now, Spencer Keepers from Keepers Concealment. Uh, Spencer's been on this show many times, and uh, he's probably one of the leading authorities on on appendix carry. And uh, before I, I ask him to start making some comments, I want to mention to all of you, I've actually uh, I've taken this jam- this man's uh, class once at TACCON. And uh, and I've also taken your I've taken your live fire appendix carry class that you taught probably two or three years ago, and then I took your lecture at TACCON. I think that was maybe two years ago or something like that. So welcome back to the show, Spencer. Good to be back, man. Uh, go ahead and tell people where they can find uh, this uh, product that we're going to talk about right now. Okay, uh, KeepersConcealment.com. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, if you get on the website, you can find all of our holsters uh, and my training schedule. Uh, yeah. you know, as you, you mentioned, I teach classes around the country and uh, uh, have a lot of openings uh, this year. It seems, you know, people are just being, you know, with this virus thing going around, people are just kind of yeah. not getting out and doing, you know, social stuff like that. Oh, man, it's driving a lot of us nuts right now. And, um, well, I want to say this, I want to say this for about nine years on this show, I have been talking about appendix carry and not until I actually took your class, uh, whenever the first time was about three years ago, I believe not, I didn't really understand it. I, I knew it and I, and I did appendix carry, but I didn't really understand it. And that's probably, you know, the benefits of it. You and I have done that. I want to invite people who, who have actually listened to my audio podcast to go back. I'd say probably about 12 or 13 episodes. I'll put a link in the show notes to that interview that you and I did on appendix carry. Um, so now I understand it a little bit and uh, I'm the owner of a, of a keepers and also hey. I, yeah and i own an errand for my oh, nice. glock 48 glock 43 x so but you got something new now called the cornerstone we, we do we, this is a cornerstone uh this is a uh among many things uh this is a this this comes from all of our other holsters there's parts from each one of it in here, and then we've done some stuff we've never done before, uh, like the, the uh, clips, the tuckable clips. Uh, you're, you still have right height and cant adjustment, you know, like we talked about. Uh, very important when you're looking at an appendix holster. Uh, <clears throat> we have what we call a swell in here instead of a wedge. It does ah. this, it does the same thing. Let me see if I can get that. Hold it up. Yeah, there we go. Closer. That's... This part right here. It does the same thing as the wedge, which is tucking the gun into your body. But the way it works out, it's a slimmer package. There's a lot less mass going on here like like the other holsters so Um, as opposed to the keepers holster there's more mass on this right 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 and you can see the wedge on you know the the uh the back side the other side yeah uh uh, no like right in the center my bad oh okay uh here you mean yeah right there Yeah, yeah exactly yeah okay so you can see that wedge that's built in there um where instead of that wedge we have the swell and okay. it actually makes the package much thinner. Um, <clears throat> you know, we wouldn't have thought it was, but it really does. It provides a real good amount of tucking the grip into the body. I see that uh, because that the, the belt comes up against that and pushes right. the butt. But I see. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the cool thing is with the tuckable, but also with the clips, you can wear it with or without a belt. Yeah. You know, uh, today I went out, um, ran a little errand, and I just, instead of taking our errand holster, <laughs> I just used one of the cornerstones, you know. Um, been really impressed with them. And let me guess, you did it with your full-size Beretta? No, no. No? We no, oh. we don't actually. 
I did it with a Glock 19. Oh, with a Glock 19. Yeah, that's so, right. I saw the list of, of guns, and you don't have one for the uh, Beretta yet. But yeah, you, yeah, yeah I see. Okay. not yet. And uh, uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But I'm thinking this guy is going to be the new hotness. Ah, look at that. We'll see. Um, but back to the holster. So one of the things that we did that that is exclusive to us uh, as of now, um, at, at least to my knowledge, is our pad where we actually connect the clips. We put one on a little bit of an angle. Okay. Now, what and um, what that did is it solved our problem of the holster wanting to walk on the belt. How did it do that? Well, so it puts that clip at a little bit of an angle, and it, that clip bites into the belt better. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it, that was just one of those things that through a lot of experimentation, a lot of t testing, um, with you know that's that's one of the things that we came up with and and then of course we've still got our rounded uh muzzle end and the you know the velcro and the foam uh set up right um it's just a great little holster uh one of the now, interesting things let me show you this real quick so you know, it's for a full size 17 and i know that we're all um Safety You're all safe, so yeah. Clear gun. So, <clears throat> one of the things that we'll notice that happens with a, a claw is, you know, like kind of all the rage. But one of the things that will happen if you have a holster with a claw on it, if you get any pressure put on the holster on the claw, the gun won't come out. Makes I mean, sense. I, I just literally hold it in there. So, in a grappling situation, that could that could create problems, right? Uh, with this, the gun just comes straight out. Okay. So okay. that's that's another way. You know, that's just one of the subtleties I talked about earlier before the show. This holster is just full of little subtleties, but the combination of them makes for you know a really incredible synergy, if you will. Um, it's that been, pretty neat. It's been, you know, it's been tested a lot. Uh, the, the feedback was, uh, exceptional. Um, uh, we're just, we're just really, really happy with it. Uh, another thing you can, you can put it on this, but it comes with another set of holes. You can okay. see that right there. Yes. So you can either straddle the uh, the belt loop if you need to, uh -huh. or if not, you can move this over to a f the flat. Uh, I think, you know, and for those reasons I talked about it, I think having it on the angle is better, um, but it still does a very good job being flat. This is just, this is just better. So I would call that a fully adjustable holster. Right. Correct. Yes. All our holsters are, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, Which that's important because a lot of less expensive holsters that seem to be quite popular, and I'm not sure why, I bet you basically have one adjustment. It goes on your body one way, and that's it. I, and I think uh, me and the late Todd Lewis Green had a discussion about that. And Todd's opinion was, that's the holster manufacturer's problem. Hmm. I'm like, Todd, come on now. You're telling me that you'll, you'll go to the nth degree adjusting, tuning, you know, a gun like he did, you know, all those test guns that he ran through uh, for the viewers that may not uh, know Todd, uh, the late Todd Lewis Green. Um, he was a, a trainer and a writer and a gun guy and worked for some of the gun companies, uh, phenomenal shooter, great instructor. Um, so, you know, he had a real, and what he would do is he would do 
uh, 50 round, I think it was 50,000 rounds in a year through a gun. I think so. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. He uh, was, he was uh, phenomenal. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but he would tune the guns, but didn't want to adjust the holster. And <laughs> my, my thought process, it has always been like when I started getting into this, it had always been, man, if I could, this holster would be great. If I could just tweak, tweak it one way or the other or make it not slide on my belt or, you know, something. There was always just something. And so when, you know, when Keepers was born, um, it, it, it quickly became adjustable because it became adjustable. Yeah. Because I started really learning that small adjustments in ride height and can't, uh, make huge differences in the comfort of the holster. Yeah, it does. It does. And we're coming up on a break here, uh, but we're going to we're going to pick this up again. There's going to be a part two of this video. So everybody who's watching this, I'm sure you're going to want to hear more in the links. I'll put a link so you can go directly to part two. But hold that thought, Spencer, about about okay. the small adjustments, about the small adjustments being a big thing. OK, and we'll be right back.